All right, hello again, everybody. So my dad and I are in here working on the Dyna again today. And uh, we've started putting it back together as you guys saw in my wash video. Um, but there've been a few small issues with the whole putting together of the bike type thing that we have discovered that are kind of holding us up like always. So um, one of the issues is this master cylinder and brake switch housing or switch housing I should say on my bars. So the master cylinder and the switch housing are from different years. So this is the switch housing that I think is for my year of Dyna. But the master cylinder was changed at some point by the previous owner. So the switch activator in the lever here does not line up with the brake light switch in the housing. So we're going to have to replace the brake light switch. We already took this switch out of here. And we're going to have to just put an inline pressure switch in the front brake line somewhere. Yeah, so that's one thing. But today we are replacing my shifter linkage because my shifter linkage that was on the Dyna, where did I put that? Don't mind my messy shop, guys. I haven't cleaned up in a while. So my shifter linkage that I took off of the Dyna is just a rusty pile of garbage. This is what we are going to replace because it's just so rusty. The chrome is completely coming off and I'm not gonna try to sand or grind this all off and paint it. It's easier just to make a new one. I'm not going to wait for one to show up in the mail or drive wherever I would have to drive to out of town to go pick one up. So uh, we're gonna make one out of some of this steel tubing that we've got. So my dad's already started working on it and then I was like, wait, cause I wanna film this. So he's got this steel tubing here and what he's done already is started to tap a thread into the end of this tubing here. I've also got these rod ends over here. The steel tubing is gonna be tapped to fit these rod ends. So, got one of them on the bike right here. As you can see, it should all work great once it's done. I've got kind of a similar thing going on on my shovel head with the rod ends, which I think the rod ends that I'm using for the diner now are leftover from when I bought these. So these were a couple rod ends. Yeah, so this was all made as well. Look at how dirty this thing is, jeez. Yeah, same kind of idea there. I've just been working on my body work a little bit, sanded it all down the other day and blah, blah, blah. And then I'll just show you guys it all painted probably in another video. Okay, so my dad's just getting this all rigged back up in the vise. And we just took some measurements just to let you guys know what we're working with here. So these rod ends are a uh, 5 16 fine thread. These will actually thread right into the transmission on the Dyna. That's what we're gonna be using for the ends of this shifter linkage. The rod that we're using or the steel tubing is 3 8 outside diameter and then between a quarter inch and a 9 30 seconds inside diameter. So it just gives us enough extra material to be able to cut a thread in it and have these things thread in. So that's what we're working with. So we're just working on the first end and then we'll have to take some measurements or just compare it to the linkage that came off of there and cut it to that appropriate length. Right, so my dad has just finished running the tap into the first end of this steel tubing here that we're working with. And I'll just turn the camera around and show you guys this. We're making sure to run the tap in as far as it can go so we can get a deep thread on there so that we are able to use the majority of the thread on 
this rod end so we'll be able to thread that in there as much as it's able to go with a lock nut that we will have threaded all the way to the top of this rod end here to help us to lock it in place once it's in there and that will also just give us a little bit of room for adjustment that tap is about that length right so it's about the length of the thread that we've got on here so if we make that thread as long as we can make it then we've got almost half the length or about half the length of this thread to work with for adjustments so this is side number one done and we are making sure to keep it nice and oiled just to preserve the tap and just to make it easier of course to cut the thread so what's really handy actually I don't know if you guys can find these where you live I could only get this in one of the automotive shops in town here and I kind of have to go search for it but it's these WD-40 with a spray nozzle rather than an aerosol can this is so handy for doing different things like with a drill press or whatever because you don't have wd-40 just spraying all over the place you can really control like how much you use with the thing i'm not sponsored by wd-40 or anything like that i'm just like giving you guys a little tip if you can find these yeah you should try to find them and i've had this well a year probably but it's just so easy to not end up wasting it because you can just slightly and just slowly kind of put a drop or two on so yeah that's a little tip from Angel. Anyway, let's just keep working on this. Okay, so we measured this piece of tubing now for the shifter linkage and got it marked. I'm just gonna cut it on the bandsaw and then we'll be able to finish tapping the other end and putting those rod ends in and then it should basically be finished after that. Perfect. That's the junk piece. And this is the good piece. I just have to clean it up on a belt sander a little bit. So just tapping the other end of this rod and then I'll clean it all up with a belt sander just to take the edges off afterwards. So the reason why he goes back and forth with the tap like that is just because the shavings from the threads being cut will kind of curl up inside of where he's cut in there. So if he goes back the opposite direction, then it'll just kind of break the curls up so that they don't uh, end up being an issue inside the new threads you're trying to cut. It's the same way as like when you're using a drill press and you're drilling through a piece of steel or whatever, then you'll get a curl of steel or aluminum or whatever coming up off of the bit. So I just cleaned it up on the belt sander a little bit, just making sure that the ends were square and taking off the burr. And now we're gonna fit everything together and see how it looks. All right, so this is it all finished up. I sanded off the bit of rust and whatever on the steel and we got the rod ends in with the lock nuts. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Definitely better than this rusty piece of crap that came off of there. And uh, it actually even looks cooler than one of those stock rods anyway. So now that it's all together, well, I'll just paint it and then we'll be able to put it on the bike. I'll show you guys that in a minute after it's all painted and on the bike. All right, uh, the shifter linkage is all done and on the bike, and I think it looks pretty darn good, like a lot better than what came off of there. So I'll just show you guys that so you can see how it looks all finished. So there it is with my new gold anodized rod ends and then the rod part that we tapped and I painted flat black. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Like definitely a lot better than what came off of there. That rusty pile of junk. Uh, so yeah, that's it for this video and I'm gonna go home now 
because I want to eat. And um, yeah, anyway, like I always say at the end of all my videos, if you like what you see, or if you just like me, or even if you don't like me, but you like my bike, my bike, then like this video, comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and hit that little notification bell if you want to be notified every time I put a new video out. And like always, I will catch you all on the flip side. Peace. Hmm.